take 27. Click. <laughs> Everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. <laughs> Hot mess video. Third time around. <laughs> I've been asked to come back and do a tutorial on this um, turtle. On the, on the turtle. So I've got a sea turtle. And then I did another one that's just a little land turtle. Cute, cute. That's what we're going to do today. And they're both going to be pendants. Okay. I've got my rubber texture mat that's just the swirls. You can use a, a deep etched rubber stamp, a background stamp. You just want to make sure that there's plenty of wide open space. You don't want to closed. Let me, let me grab one so I can show you the difference. get to my stamp drawer who in their right mind makes it where they have to move stuff to get into their stamp drawer I do okay yeah this will work. <coughs> so I've got this recollections damask set of stamps and as you can see this giant heart right here has what I'm talking about nice open spaces deep etched rubber stamp nice open spaces this one, on the other hand, the pattern is too close together. Your clay won't have room to get up inside all that detail. This one would be great. So, any kind of an open pattern stamp that you want to use. This is my favorite <laughs> texture stamp. I love swirls. I love spirals. So, we've got that tissue blade. My knitting needle that uh, I say all the time you can use it. Toothpick. Um, end of a skinny paintbrush. Something like that for the details. Um, you can use a needle tool. It won't give you quite as deep or as wide a pattern. But And then I've got a little ball tool. Again, you can use the end of your paintbrush. The clay. Because I've already done this three times I've got a little bit for his shell that I have not mixed together as much this is basically just pushed together from the chopped up stage the rest of it this is what I, is going to be the bottom the head and the legs so that's what we'll do first And for anybody who's interested in how I, I made the mix, the tutorial before this, the, the Flow Turquoise Bead tutorial, shows how I put the mix together. Alright. Don't panic. Alright, I just need a little bit for his underneath side. Belly of the turtle, so to speak. Let's see, did I get enough? I need a little bit more than that. But I don't want to short myself on his head and legs. I was completely done. Just so you know. Completely done. But my evil camera doesn't love me anymore. Alright, we're going to pick a, pick a side, Lynn. Just pick a side. Flatten it out and do a sort of a round. And then elongate it just a little bit. Nice little egg shape, oval shape, turtle shape. So this is going to be his belly. doesn't have to be perfect doesn't have to be necessarily a completely even thickness but I did try to go for sort of <laughs> okay now this little bit that's left is going to be his head and his legs so again I'm gonna 
get me kind of a snake going here. A roll, a log, whatever your preferred term is. Alright. Take a bit about like, about like yay. What size is that? Have no clue. This is just going to be one of those things that's kind of subjective. You have to just decide what size you want it. And why are you doing that? Weird. Alright. So what I'm going to do on this end, I'm going to make kind of a pyramid shape. Short, squatty pyramid shape okay and then I'm going to blunt down down the tip of his nose so you got that you can already see it's starting to look like a kind of a turtle shape turtle's head shape then we're going to take the ball tool then do your paintbrush whatever you're going to use and right here where is going to be his little eyebrows his little brow area I just made two little indents just so I can see if they're going to line up if they're going to alright he's got two little indents there so I'm going to go ahead and poke them in pretty good and make him some eyes crooked as all get out don't you know alright there we go still a little crooked Fortunately, you're not going to be looking at him from that direction too often. Alright, there we go. And then I'm going to flip it around. This one has a tiny, tiny ball tool at the other end. These tools are nail art tools, and I just ordered them off of eBay. And I literally paid like four bucks free shipping for the set of five of them. So they have different uh, size balls on each end. So I'm going to take the little bitty tool and making two little <laughs> for his nose okay there we go there's our little turtle's head super super simple pinch his neck out just a little bit more and then we're gonna stick him on his belly we're gonna stick his head and all I'm going to do is flatten it down. Just like that. No, no, uh... You don't have to worry about smoothing the clay out or anything because this is going to between, be between his belly and his shell. I'm going to do this. Alright. Now, I've got my little scrap here. Again, I'm going to true up this end just a little bit. I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm going to cut each half into half. This is going to be his legs. I don't measure. I just guess. It's not going to be that exact. Alright, you're going to take each little section and roll it. Oh, let me pause. Okay. That seems to be what, what my problem is. If I make my sections of video too long, my camera will say it's too long to upload onto my computer. Which is insane. My computer has plenty of room for that. Alright, so we've got a longer little log. Flatten the end. Just pinch it flat. And I don't mean too flat. Just flatten it a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to round the tips a little bit. And then we're going to take, again, the skinny end of the ball tool, the pointed end of your toothpick. Let's see if I can do this. And I'm just going to make four little indents. And it's already getting warm in my studio, so my clay is getting very soft. There we go. Now, the original way that I did this, which is actually a little bit 
more forgiving. Let me roll out another one. Let's do this. I'll put his little paw on my finger. And then I'll take the tiny end of the ball tool and make four dots close to the edge. Okay. Like that. And then after I've got the legs, after I've got him all put together, I'll go back. Because you've got a little more to hold on to then. And do that same. And do that same little like that. What it does is it removes a little bit of the clay out of your way. When you make those dots, you've thinned the clay out right there. So it's a little easier to make his little toes. So about, we've got two of them made. So I'm going to, again, point the other end just a little bit. Pick up our body and decide how you want his legs. You've got a lot of leeway here. You can make him look like he's walking, putting his legs going different directions. Just decide how you want them and just smash them on. And then what I do is I slightly bend it down. Like that. You can flatten his little foot back out. Alright, so we got that one. And that one. And because I don't know what that is, get off there. Got a bit of black embossing powder that I was playing with yesterday. Alright, so there's his little front legs. And we're going to do that two more times right after I pause again. If I forget, y'all just yell out. I'll yell out and say, pause, Lynn, pause. Wish you could. Okay, flatten the end. Round the two little corners a bit. Dot tool. Last. Hopefully. So I have to do this again. Y'all might miss out on a turtle tutorial. Kiss the toes. There we go. This little point is Point at the end on the other one. That just makes you have less clay to smush in between. Alright, again. Side how you want his little legs. And push down. Now, on this one, and I'm going to go ahead and show you, even though I already have this made into his foot and just do that again and this one I started with that same little log okay, maybe not quite as skinny same little log and then flattened the whole thing out basically like that for his little flipper and then I took my needle tool and for a little edge detail on his flipper, just did this. That's all I did. Made him four of those, put those on his body instead. The back ones, of course, I flipped this way instead. And I put the detail going this way. For his little back flippers. 
Okay. All right. Now let me remake this leg. Smash it flat. Two little toe dots. And then pinch the other end a bit. Alright. Alright. And down. So here we have, so far, our little kindergarten looking turtle's body. And I know, in the other video, I did a disclaimer at the beginning telling you, there will look, there will be a point where he'll look like, oh my gosh, then what are you thinking? And this is probably it. So, we're that far. Now, again, last time I took a little pinch off the shell portion this time I'm gonna take a little pinch off that leg I just finished just to make him a little tail a tiny little piece of a tail probably should have been a little bigger than that but you get the idea now I've got this hot mess looking piece of clay here. And the only reason I did it this way, I went straight from the chopped up bits of clay because I wanted it to have that turquoisey kind of look. Chunky kind of look. I tried really hard not to distort this too much when I took it apart last time. So let's see what we've got here. How close is this? Not at all. I don't mind messing up the detail and having to fix it. I just don't want to mess up all the chunkiness. But I may have to just cut it all back up and try again. Mm. Alright. So we've taken the part that we had left, shape it about the same as the as the belly of the turtle. Okay. And about the same size. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the edge. And whilst pushing towards the center, I'm going to flatten the edge out a little bit. I don't mean really flat. Thin it. So that your shell will have that characteristic turtle-shaped shell. Hot mess, hot mess. Pause time. Again, I'm going to say I'm, I'm at a conundrum. My camera and my computer both um, are in dire need of upgrading. My computer is old enough now that I'll have to have a new computer. Um, before I can upgrade to um, even Windows 7, much less Windows 8. And of course the Windows ME is fixing to expire where Microsoft's not going to be updating it anymore. So I've got to do something. Alright, now I've got his top laid on his bottom. And I'm going to again go around the edge and smush him together a little bit trying not to distort his details very much. 
it's unavoidable a little bit. So here we go. Firstly, there's our little turtle guy. There's barely a little tail sticking out there. Okay. Little turtle guy. Just keep tweaking him till you get him the way you want. Trust me, the first one was better. Can't help that now, can I? Alright, needle tool. I'm going to, again, start on the bottom like I did the first time. And really, all you want to do is give a little hint of detail, just in case he gets flipped over and to where you can see the bottom. I'm going to start by just making a little dent on either side of his legs. And on either side of his head. And either side of his tail. And then just fill in. Okay, so he's got little sections around just like a tortoise shell does. Turtle shell does. And then I'm going to cap off those little lines with another line. And since this is... It, <laughs> um, excuse me. Since this is his belly, you can leave it just like that. That gives you plenty of room to sign your name or whatever you do um, on the back side of your pieces. I'll put my little Lens Crafts uh, leaf logo on there. Alright, so. Then we're going to flip him back over. And since I didn't finish off his toes on the back, I'm going to do that now. And see what I'm saying? Now that I have the whole turtle to hold on to, I can rest his little foot right in my hand right there and have a little bit more resistance when I go to make his toes. There we go. Now, all that little distorted clay right there, don't worry about that. Since we're going to um, texture him, that's going to get hidden. There we go, his little toes. Now, back to the needle tool. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go on either side of his tail, either side of his leg, either side of his leg, his head. little grooves and I'm sorry that it looks so messy because he has grooves from the last time he has grooves over grooves but all will work out in the end again go and cap off those little plates that's what they're called plates on a turtle shell and again Turtles will have a, a row of plates that basically go down the middle of their back. How many turtles can you make in one day? And of course I made the land turtle last night just to make sure I could fit it in a short enough video for y'all. Alright, there's his little down his back. And I'm sorry, the detail's getting lost. Not only in the texture that was already there, but the varying colors on his back. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as we know. There we go. And again, I know it looks like a hot mess right now. But... <coughs> It's all in the surface detail that we're going to put on after he's baked. So right now, what I'm going to do, if you could see a difference, this one has swirl pattern on top of the pattern that we just did. So. And the way I did this was with him laying flat on the table, I'm going to do his legs one at a time the back of his head so let's do that real quick 
try to be up here on camera. Wait, pause first. Whilst trying not to push the camera back off the table. So, his little leg, just a little bit of pressure, it doesn't take much. And then I'm going to look at it. Okay, well it takes a little more than that. Also, I had my stamp on a particular corner that's not very textured. So I just needed to move to a different spot. There we go, that's what we want. It's that texture from the stamp. Okay. back around this way to get his head. In your head you probably want to take particular care not to um, squish too much. So there we go. He's got a little swirl right on his head and I love that. So cute. And then, the back of his shell. And I'm going to go like this, so that I'm not putting any more pressure on his head. And let's see what we've got here. Come on. There we go. Again, I know it looks like a hot mess right now, but... Okay, <laughs> I'm going to put him in the oven and be back and try to get this off the camera right now. See what happens. I'll be back. Okay, and luckily, because I almost forgot, we got to put his little jump ring in. And what I try to do is I try to pick one of my jump rings that, no idea can see this out of focus that's not completely aligned on the end and if it is just take your pliers and just not really open it just misalign the ends just a tiny bit I'm gonna take my tissue blade and flip him over and right where his little mouth would be so from underneath here right where his little mouth would be I'm gonna cut in just a little bit like that and while my blade is in there I'm gonna rock it back and forth up and down open it up just a little bit and then I'm gonna take that unaligned end of my jump ring the open ends of your jump ring if you're using a um, mm -hmm. A split ring, a C ring, uh, I mean, a uh, spring ring, a C, a, hmm, hmm. a split ring or a C ring, a spring ring, oh my lordy goodness. Then you don't have to necessarily worry about the ends being unaligned. Now I'm just going to take and um, bring some of that clay to cover up the opening that we made so there we go with his little ring in his nose so to speak in his mouth now oh, it's going in the oven all right and we did have success removing the first bit of video off the camera so should be good to go for the baking so off i go to the oven be back Alright, here he is out of the oven and he's still warm. Looks basically the same as when he went in. Some of the darker green color has darkened up just a little bit that you can see. 
but right now I'm going to show you a comparison. Now, keep in mind this one was the dark green color all over. So, whatever color of clay you use is only going to show really in the in the recesses where as if I was antiquing it that's where the that's where the paint would stick but we're not going to antique this one at least I don't think so so what I've got is these are my Inca golds this one is the silver this one is now is the time to look hold on this one is the, it is the green yellow. It is the green yellow, so that's that color. And then I have the gold in the, in the full size. I have in the sample size the copper. The old gold, which let me show you, looks quite a bit different. This is a yellower, brassier gold, and this is a little more antique gold color. Although I do believe they have an antique gold color also. And there's also one that I believe is called a yellow gold. And quite a few golds. And then this is the old silver, which is almost more of a platinum-y, goldy silver in the jar. It looks a little different when you put it on. So those are the only six colors that I have and in in my situation keep in mind I live here in Texas the the small sample size at least in my weather area because it, it can go from being dry 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 like it has been the last couple of years to being a humid humid year which they're predicting this year so my sample sizes are very dry. I have to, I have to um, moisten them every time I go to use them. Exactly the opposite of the big ones. Let me show you my beautiful silver. It's very creamy. Very, very lovely. I've heard people say they've had trouble with it molding. I haven't had that as an issue. It, it's like... It's literally like touching Vaseline. It's that creamy. So I'm going to put a little bit of the silver on to start out with. Just maybe here and there. Put on his head. Just a little bit right there. And then I'm going to turn him over it. Just do the same thing. The bottom doesn't matter quite as much, just as long as you get some color on there. And the best thing about the Inca Golds is they dry super, super fast. And um, after it's dry, you can go back with a soft cloth, or I usually use a paper towel. And buff it up a little bit and it'll get just a little bit glossier. Because it, as it dries it will dull down just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, now I'm going to do the old silver. And let me check and make sure I've got it moistened enough. Of course not. So we'll let that sit there for just another minute. And I'm going to use a little bit of the green. If I can pick him up. And don't forget like the sides of his head. And places where your finger doesn't just necessarily go right into and if you put too much of one color don't go back don't worry you can go back and add some of the other color and I will definitely be expanding my colors of Inca Golds as soon as I can afford it <laughs> Now 
And if there's a place that you really want some color and you can't get to it, get a Q-tip. Okay. So there he is with just the silver and the green. And then I'm going to check my, my old silver again. Real quick while that's kind of soaking in. This one was done with the silver, the yellow green, the green yellow, and the gold. That's what's on this one. This one is the yellow green, the green yellow, sorry, the gold, and the copper. That's what's on this one. Okay, and then on this one we're going to do the silver, the green, yellow, and hopefully the old silver, if I can get some. There we go. Not as easy. And of course, it won't necessarily just stand out that it's different than the other silver when they're on top of each other like that. But if I did a side-by-side -side comparison on like some black clay or something, you'd probably be able to tell the difference. If I was doing it on camera, you might be able to see something. I'm going to go back with just a little bit of the green again. Just, just just a couple of seconds. Really doesn't take long. Well, I get some of this lovely color <laughs> off my fingers. Alright, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, now you can see where we've covered up a lot of that turquoise color, but you can still see quite a bit of it. I'm going to take my paper towel, and as you can see, this is where I did the copper one last night, the one with the copper on it. And that's about all you'll get off there when you, uh, when you go to buff it, if you get that much. The copper seems to leave a little more residue than the other colors on your whatever you're buffing with and just give it a little bit of pressure and buff it out a bit kind of like shoe polish although the Inca Golds are um, they say they're non-toxic they're water um, soluble if I didn't like that I could squirt that with water and get just about all of it back off um, and they don't have a they don't have a really heavy smell. I 
it will tear your paper towel up a little bit if you're using a paper towel but my main towel that I use over here is terry cloth and it's a little rough for uh, for this you can drag off some of your product if, if you uh, rub too hard so that's why I choose the paper towel alright there he is now you can put a coat of glaze on him satin a gloss whatever and that's mainly just to protect from scratches because it's pretty um, it's pretty on there I've heat set with the ink of gold on there. I've had instances where I had to return a piece to the oven with it on there. Doesn't really seem to hurt it. So here we go. Our little turtles. I've loved turtles since I was a little bitty girl. We have a thing we live, uh, I've said many times, we live out in the country in a pretty rural area and we do what I like to call turtle rescue if you're driving on the back roads and you see a turtle in the middle of the road one of us will jump out and try to shoo it or move it into the direction it's going to get it out, out of the middle of the road because of course you know they get hit quite often especially with as dry as it's been they'll, they'll cross roads to try to find to try to find water so here we go three cute little turtles doesn't get any better than that does it all right if y'all have any questions feel free to leave them below uh, can't guarantee I can answer them but I can try <laughs> if I forgot anything I apologize oh I did want to say I did bake this at 275 for 30 minutes um, it's a little thicker than a quarter of an inch but uh, it still should be, it still should be plenty, plenty cured. So, all right. Again, I'm out of here. I'll holler at y'all later. Bye now.